Hello, my name is Trina. I'm a medical cannabis patient. I partake of cannabis on a regular basis for PTSD, arthritis in both my knees and ankles, social anxiety, menopause, anger management, dyslexia, and a few other conditions you can learn more about through watching the previous shows on this channel. This is the Productive Cannabis Connoisseur, a channel dedicated to medical cannabis patients and adults 18 and older. So today what I'm going to do is do a review of a total of three songs. One of the songs is from a, a, um, an album from the band known as Meshuggah. And the other uh, two songs are going to be from the band known as uh, Animals as Leaders. So that's what I'm going to be doing reviewing today. Uh, as per request from you in Iniquities, who thank you so much who donated to this channel. I really appreciate you. And um, I just got through listening to all of the all three songs. Um, I listened to the Meshuggah song twice, and then I listened to each of the um, Animals as Leaders each of those songs once. So I'm going to give you my review on it. But first, um, I'm really low on herb. <laughs> So I've been smoking um, out of this little small pipe that I usually use for hash, and it's I've been smoking the resin out of it. I know it sounds gross, but sometimes times get tough, and that's what happens. So um, there's like remnants of um, hash in there, and remnants of uh, of herb, you know, so inside of here. So that's what I'm gonna be smoking tonight for this video today. Um, if you'd like to donate to help fund my medicine <laughs> you can go to my paypal google uh paypal google pay um and my gofundme so and every time you donate to this channel i can create a video for you based on a topic of your choosing or i can create a, a piece of artwork of your choosing check out my artwork on my etsy on my instagram on my facebook and on my twitter and you'll see the type of artwork that i make if you're interested in donating and requesting a piece of artwork. So, cheers and thanks for joining me. I gotta turn this way because the fan's on. <laughs> well, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm just gonna turn the fan off. Let me pause this and I'll turn on off the fan. Alright, I'm back. Turned off the fan just so that I'll be able to um, be able to light this. <laughs> cheers. Oh, I didn't get anything out of there. Hold on, let me try this again. <laughs> that was something. Anyway, better than nothing. So anyway, the first song I'm going to talk about is from the new Mashuga album. It's the seventh album. And the name of the song called They Move a Blow. Um, what I was disappointed about with this album of Meshuggahs is that where's the vocals? There was only a little bit of vocals and it was mainly um, instrumental. And the style of it felt like doom rock. And I'm not really into doom rock. Um, I think it would be good for a soundtrack from a movie. Um, I have to tell you my favorite Meshuggah album is Ab Zen. And my favorite track on Obzin is uh, Bleed. Um, Meshuggah has a whole bunch of a lot of good songs that I like on different albums. Um, like the one that has Colossus on it. Uh, I like that song a lot. Um, I pr personally, when it comes to Meshuggah, I like the edgy stuff and um, I can really relate to that more. With this album, with this, this uh, track on this album, um, it's it's nice. It's calm and mellow <laughs> for a for a Meshuggah song. If you listen to a lot of the Meshuggah albums that I've listened to, you know what I mean. This is a lot more mellow, and it's like <laughs> I was joking. I was saying it was smooth smooth jazz rock, <laughs> smooth jazz metal, <laughs> because in comparison to what I'm used to hearing them play, them create. This is so much different, and a lot of times the Meshuggah music was... Meshuggah songs were Borg-like. made me think of the Borg. 
you know, and a lot of the, like that one song that I'm talking about that was on the Obzin album, Bleed, I mean, the lyrics were saying, thank you for turning me into clockworks. Yeah. <laughs> and then there's a song called Clockworks also. Um, I thought they were saying, help me, they're turning me into clockworks. That's probably what he was saying. But yeah, it's like, that. those songs were a lot more edgier, and that's what I prefer. When I listen to metal like this, I like the edgier stuff. Um, I'm not really into the melodic type of uh, vibe of metal. Uh, it's some more like doom rock to me, is what it sounded like to me. Um, yeah, I didn't... <laughs> I, I can't say that it was bad because the, mu the music, the musicianship is awesome. But there was no singing and I like vocals. I do. I, I like vocals. I like the fact that... The lead singer for Meshuggah was able to, how it was so synchronized and and just right, you know, synced up just right with the singing and the music and conveying the message. And I really felt it. I felt the message and I felt that, like it related to what's, what I'm going through, what I'm experiencing right now in my life. So, um, but with this song, it just feels... I just don't feel it. It doesn't feel like the Meshuggah that I'm used to. Once again, I'm not saying that I dislike it. I'm just saying that it's not my favorite. I like the edgier and the, the monster voice that's bringing out wisdom. <laughs> bringing out wisdom from his own, you could tell from his own personal experiences. And um, that's all I have to say about that. I don't, I don't really prefer this song that much. When I looked in the... Let me take my boots off. I'm getting hot. When I looked in the comment section um, for this video, it was a video... I think it was a music video. Anyway, um, when I looked in the comment section, it was just all positive. Oh, this is great. This is a masterpiece. And I thought, okay, you know... It's getting dark here. You know what? This is a good song. But have you guys heard any of their other music? You know, it's like... You act like you've never heard any other than Meshuggah songs or, or albums to call this one a masterpiece. You know, I'm just, I'm just kind of like, <laughs> I don't know if I'd say confused by that, but I'm just kind of like, if you think this is a masterpiece, what do you think about all the other albums that they made in the past? You know, what do you think about those? Are those too hard and edgy for you? If you think this is a masterpiece? And some people don't really care about vocals. I've noticed that. That some people just are more into the music and not the vocals, really. I've noticed that by about some people. And that's okay, whatever. But some people like to have the vocals and the music. I, I personally like having vocals and music with this genre of music. Um, and just didn't, it wasn't, didn't have the same edge as I was used to with Meshuggah. That's all there is to it. And when I think of Meshuggah, I think of Edge and, you know, cutting right to the core. And, you know, here's the thing is that when I was looking in the comment section also, um, someone said that it's edge, this song was edgy and raw. And I wasn't feeling that because it was a lot more mellower than all the other stuff that Meshuggah has made. So, <laughs> hey. So the next one I want to uh, review, I'm going to do it all in one video. There's two songs that I... Um, the iniquities requested for me to review by the band called Animals as Leaders. <clears throat> the first one I'm going to... Actually, both of these uh, these songs are from the album Parahesia. And um, the first track is Microaggressions. Um, and I found the title, by the way, on that. Yeah, Microaggressions. What is that about? Little small bursts of aggression? <laughs> Because that can be very toxic if uh, if it's just done just here and there, but out of nowhere. And I've met people like that, the, the little spots of aggression, they're, they're smooth going and all of but all of a sudden they're angry for whatever reason. That's a lot of the people here at this apartment <laughs> apartment complex. Um, so anyway, um, I just don't feel it. That's what I wrote about. I took notes on it when I when I listened to the music. I just don't feel it. And I wish they had vocals in it. I like vocals. When I was in a band, I liked singing. And I thought that singing along with the music... Like you sing, a, the, there's the singer. 
and they have the basic uh, story of the song. And then you have the music that conveys what the singer is, is putting through. There's that synchronicity between the, the vocals and the instrumentals. But there wasn't that. And some people, like I said, some people are fine without hearing vocals. They're more in the music. Here's the thing, too. I've noticed this about people, is that there could be vocals in a song, and they um, they don't really care what, what was being said. They just, oh, this music's awesome. They're dancing to it. But the lyrics could be really foul and horrible. <laughs> but yet, they... They don't care because the music, the musicianship is tight. The message of the music, um, like someone singing about it's all right, cocaine or whatever, <laughs> songs like that. People like the music, but they don't even really care that this guy is talking about how how cocaine's awesome or whatever. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so here's the other song, Gordian Knot. I wasn't feeling this one either because there's no vocals in this either. I like. The musicianship is great, but I like to have vocals as well. Um, <clears throat> I started singing in a chorus when I was in um, uh, elementary and junior high school, and I liked having, I liked the fact of how you can use your voice as an instrument. And I feel like the voice can be a really beautiful instrument, just as an actual, like, physical instrument, like a guitar, a violin. A bass, guitar, drums, you name it, whatever instrument you're playing. Your voice can be an instrument too, as well. And that's why I feel like when Meshuga had the vocalist singing as well as the musicians playing their instruments, it was so synergistic and so complete to me. Um, but without the vocals, it feels, it feels, it feels ghost-like. It feels empty. It feels incomplete. That there needs to be those vocals within the mix. And I'm somebody who loves... I love to sing. And, um... I just missed hearing that... That cut to the core type of vocals of the lead singer from Meshuga. And... And was his leaders. They're great musicians. Very much so. But it's just... There's no vocals. And that's the one thing that I love is vocals, along with the music, because, as I said, you got the person singing the song with the lyrics, telling the story, and then the music backing it up. Like, this is what they're conveying, you know, with each instrument. You know, they're able to convey what the singer is trying to put through in their vocals. So, that's the one thing that I really didn't like about either of these three songs is that there was any in the Meshuggah song there was a little bit of vocals but not much and there's a nine minute and 36 second song so and then you got um yeah then you got uh what's the other one microaggressions which was four minutes and three seconds I can't remember the amount of time Gordian Knight was I think that was about the same time as the uh, microaggressions yeah, I'm not really fond of that <laughs> that title, Microaggressions. Yeah. Um, Gordian Knot's kind of a cool um, a cool title. <laughs> mm. But I just wasn't feeling either one, all uh, any of them. It fell flat for me. I think they're good musicians, but it fell flat for me. It's just kind of like looking at a painting. Like You can look at a, a Norman Rockwell, and you can go, yeah, he's really talented. He's really good. He's able to convey the human figure <clears throat> very well, very lifelike. But does it, do I feel anything from it? No, I don't really feel anything from Norman Rockwell art. So that's how it, it's kind of music to me is like art, like visual art. Um, with this music, with these songs I was listening to, I was just feeling like they're like soundtracks from a movie. They would be tight as fuck in like a a Batman movie or whatever, or any kind of movie that's like that, you know? It does have that vibe to it, but I don't see it as something that I want to watch, I mean, listen to. Like just... a space horror movie is what I imagine with some of these. Exactly, yeah, exactly. So With the other one, it kind of gave me a steampunk vibe with um, the Animals as Leaders song. Oh, the Microaggressions or the Gordian Knot? Yeah, yeah. Microaggressions or Gordian Knot. <laughs> 
Yeah, so the one that, the one that sounded all like um, classical almost. Oh yeah, exactly. Yeah. It could be used for a soundtrack. It could be used uh, for soundtrack for a movie, soundtrack for a TV show. Yeah. TV shows these days are starting to be more interesting than <laughs> than movies, to tell you the truth. Mm -hmm. So that's what I got for today or this evening, uh, as far as a review on the Mashuga song. Um, the, they moved below, and the and that even that title they moved below. I couldn't feel that from it, from the song. I didn't get that message. They moved below, or that feeling, or anything. The title didn't quite fit the music, and from what I was hearing. <laughs> so, I and when I know, like I said, when I looked at the comment section of any of these songs, everybody was had a lot of positive things to say. That's cool, because they're great musicians, but not one person had anything to say, like, where's the vocals or anything? Is it really like that, where people don't really care about the vocals, they're just more into the music? Because that happens a lot with a lot of music. Um, let's just take, for instance, and this is a genre I don't talk about a lot, like R&B. People will get down with the R&B, you know, groove and the infectious groove, but not realizing what the people are singing aren't really isn't really that great. <laughs> yeah, it like they have some really good music, but it doesn't match up with the vocals. Mm -hmm. um, in this case, there was no vocals hardly. I mean, for well, the last two songs there were no vocals. The first song, the Meshuggah song, they moved below. There was a, a little bit of vocals, but the rest, most of the song was instrumental. And you know how what I said about it, I, I prefer to have both. Because I think they both work harmoniously together. Both vocals and instruments. Um, so yeah, that's all I have to say for this evening about these two bands and their new songs that they came out with. Thank you so much for joining me for this evening's... Um, Music, I can call it cannabis and music. <laughs> Thank you, you in Uniquities, for uh, proposing these suggestions for a video and these specific bands. I really appreciate your donation. I really appreciate um, all that you've uh, done for for this channel and um, and all of you too. So, if you guys want to go check out these songs from these bands, I will put the links in the description below. So you can check them out for yourself and decide for yourself how you like them, you know? So, <laughs> I was thinking of doing a, a review on Meshuggah just in general, just on, based on the, based on the albums that I really like. Um, but I'll do that another time. But until then, thanks so much for joining me. Uh, if you want to donate, like I said, you can go to my PayPal, my Google Pay, my, um, or actually also my GoFundMe because I still have a GoFundMe up and um, in exchange for your donation I can create a video like this based on a topic of your choosing or I can create a video uh, yeah I can also do a commission piece for you uh, just check out my artwork and see what it is that I create so with that said brightest blessings to you all I'll see you soon stay highly productive and highly creative and by the way, uh, I have other metal bands that I like. Also, like, um, not Metallica. It <laughs> was good, too. But yeah, I mean, there's some things they've made. I'm, I don't want to commit myself to a whole Metallica album, but there's some things that I like that they've made. Um, I like Slayer a lot. That's where it all started for me with metal, with Slayer. And I feel like they're the ultimate be-all and end-all of metal. How it all... I mean, for me, that was, that was my... My main introduction to metal was, was through Slayer. So, anyway. <laughs> but that's it. And then the, the the blessing from God, as my son would call it. Yeah, gift from God. Yeah. Gift from God. God hates us all. That one's tight. So, anyway. Yeah, because I found that one. I can tell you the story about that one. I found that one on the side of the, um, on the, side of the road one time when I was uh, going for a limp because... Uh, my legs were still in kind of a bad condition at that time. This is back when I, when my healing was a lot faster too, by the way. Yep. Um, and 
Yeah, I found that along with the Scorpion King soundtrack. Barely all that scratched up. So that's definitely a message. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's it. was trying to destroy it. Yeah, but they couldn't destroy it. Because <laughs> hmm. it was meant for you to find it, yeah. Yep. <laughs> so anyway, with that said, brightest blessings to you all. I'll see you soon.